In this problem, we want to calculate the pressure losses that occur due to friction inside the pipe. So we have a big tank on the left, a small tank on the right. Our pipe guides the water to a turbine here, which is on the bottom right. And what we want to do is calculate how much pressure loss we have due to the water flowing through the pipe. Um, we have 800 liters of water flowing every second through this pipe. The losses, they will occur due to two things. One is the friction along the walls. So there's shear inside the pipe because the velocity of the water on the walls of the pipe is always zero. So there's shear applying inside the pipe. And this translates into a pressure loss between the entrance and the exit of the pipe. And the second uh, source of losses is the bends. We have four bends here, one here, one there, one there, and one there. And each of those bends incurs losses. And this is quantified using a similar way. So let's take care first about the losses due to friction. Um, and to quantify those, we want to calculate the Reynolds number. This is the first thing we should calculate when we start any problem in fluid mechanics. And to get the Reynolds number, we need to calculate the average velocity inside the pipe. And this we get from the volume flow. So let's write out uh, V average here as being the volume flow, which I write with a curly V to not mix it up with uh, velocity, uh, divided by the cross-section area. And it happens to be the volume flow here divided by pi r squared or pi d over 4, d squared over 4, like this. And we can put in numbers directly into this. We have volume flow is 800 liters per second, but that's in meters cube per second. This is only 0 0.8 meters cube per second. And I divide this by pi um, times 1 over 4 times the diameter squared, which is 1.1 meters, like this. And if you put this into your calculator, you should get something like 0 0.842. And this is a velocity, so it is meters per second. And this is the average inside the pipe. It's not a very fast flow on average, but some fluid particles will be much faster than this. Some fluid particles will be much slower. Okay, what is the Reynolds number? Very important question, uh, because it determines how turbulent the flow is, how, how much turbulence, how much complexity there is inside the flow. Well, in this case, the Reynolds number, by convention, it is based on the diameter and the average velocity. Uh, so the um, uh, we have rho v average d over mu here. Um, and in this case, we have water, so which is whose density is 10 to the power 3. Uh, the average velocity we just calculated is 0 0.8, I'm sorry, 0 0.842. Let me pull this up a little bit so I have more space to write. 0.842 um, meters per second, and I multiply this by diameter, which is 1.1, and I divide this by viscosity, which is 10 to the power minus 5, I believe. Let me just check that. 10 to the power minus 5 pascal seconds. And then uh, we get, with this, we get 9.251 times 10 to the power 5, and this says Reynolds number. It doesn't have any unit. It's a Reynolds based on the diameter. Is this a big Reynolds or a small Reynolds? Um, it's relatively large. So it's more than a few thousand, which is usually the limit above which the flow becomes turbulent. Uh, but it's not, um, it's not rare in engineering problems to have Reynolds number that are several dozens of millions. So it's relatively large, but not extremely large. Okay, what do we do with this? This allows us to see that uh, the flow is turbulent inside the pipe. And this will guide the rest of the problem. The flow is turbulent and we, we want to calculate is the pressure loss due to friction, which we call delta PF here. And the convention in engineering is to quantify this using a simple formula, which is the delta P loss is one half of rho of the V average squared multiplied by a friction factor F uh, multiply by the length and divided by the diameter of the pipe, L over D, like so. All of those terms we have except one, which is the friction factor. And the friction factor depends moderately on the Reynolds number and on the roughness of the pipe. 
And this is found out using uh, the Reynolds number and the, rough, the relative roughness as input into one big diagram, which is um, the Moody diagram. So let's prepare data that we need for this. And the data we need is the relative roughness. And the relative roughness is epsilon over D. It is the average size of the roughness on the size of the pipe divided by the diameter of the pipe. Um, and this, in our case, happens to be, if I scroll back up here, we have 0 0.25 millimeters of average roughness on the side of the pipe, and the pipe happens to be 1.1 meter in diameter. Um, so when I put these numbers, I have to pay a lot of attention to uh, the units. 0 0.25 millimeters is 0 0.25 times 10 to the power minus 3 meters, and I divide this by 1.1, and this gives me mm, 2.27 times 10 to the power minus 4 meter, uh, and it's not even meter, this is a dimensionless ratio, because I divided meters by meters, so this has no unit, and it says epsilon over d, like this, and this I need because I'm going to read the friction factor f inside the Moody diagram, so then let's now turn to the Moody diagram, this is this very big, scary, and somewhat hmm, inelegant diagram, um, and it's always scary the first time, but as the more you use it, the more you will find it simple uh, to use. So let me show you what we have. We have um, on the left what we want to read out of this, which is the friction factor. On the bottom is uh, something we want to input, which is the Reynolds number. And on the right is another thing we want to input, which is the relative roughness. And we have those two values which we just calculated. I reproduced them here. The Reynolds number on top, 9.251 times 10 to the power of 5 and the relative roughness, 2.27 times 10 to the power minus 4. These are all dimensionless values on the bottom, on the right, and on the left. This is a completely non-dimensional diagram, which makes it extremely interesting and useful in engineering. Okay, so what do we want to do here? Let's find out where on the bottom scale we are with our Reynolds number. Our Reynolds number is 9.251 times 10 to the power 5. And so it's between 10 to the power 5, which is here, and 10 to the power 6, which is there. Um, and if I look at where we are, here is 1 times 10 to the power 5, 2 times 10 to the power 5, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We are in between 9 and 10 of 10 to the power 5. Yes, So we are somewhere in between those two lines. And this guides me as to where I would... Uh, like to be on a vertical scale up here. So I'm going to draw a line here uh, that indicates where I'm going to read this diagram. And this line should be relatively straight. It should shoot up like this on this diagram, like that. So I'm going to read um, the output of the friction factor according to where I am on this position here. The second input I want to have is the relative roughness here. And the relative roughness we, le we read on the right scale, and we have 2.27 times 10 to the power minus 4, which when I read up here, sets me somewhere in between 2 and 5 times 10 to the power 4, so probably a bit closer to 2, so something like this position here. However, in this roughness lines, they curve up, so I do not want to draw a line that is purely horizontal, I want to draw a line that follows up the curve of the roughness. And so I'm going to draw something like this that is going to go like that and curve up. This is not a very good drawing at all. Let me try to do it again. Um, it's a bit difficult with my digital tablet here. So I'm going to move up like this, like so. This is the line that I want to follow. And at the intersection of those two lines here, so when I am aligned on this point here, let me draw a cross here, here. This is the coordinate of the point, which lets me then shoot right to the left side and read over here the value of the friction factor, which I'm looking for. And so had I done this a bit more precisely, I would have landed here to a point which um, previously, I had read a 0 0.0158 here. 
Um, do not worry too much about how precise you are reading those points. What we're generally looking for is, is the order of magnitude of the friction factor. So I want you to land around the correct point here and uh, not say um, at that point or at that point over there. The precision in that kind of problem is not critical to us. So this is how we, this is how we read the friction factor. So we have a friction factor of 0 0.0158 um, here in this case. So we can come back now to our calculation from before. And I can go back down here. And we have the delta P F, which is here. So delta P due to friction. Now we can calculate, we can put in numbers in there. We have minus one half. Rho is the density of water. I'm sorry, 10 to the power of three. The average velocity happens to be, we calculated it above uh, 0 0.842. Um, and this is squared, and I multiply this by the friction factor, which we just read as being 0 0.0158. And then the length of the pipe happens to be four kilometers. So that's four times 10 to the power of three, 4,000 meters. Uh, and I divide this by the diameter, which is 1.1. And if I put this into a, my calculator, I get minus 2.03 minus 2.03 times 10 to the power 4 and this is a pressure a pressure difference and this is pascals all right so this is about minus 0 0.2 bar so it's a lot less than the pressure um, hydrostatic pressure difference that we had available for the turbine okay so this is the friction loss. This is the pressure loss due to friction inside the pipe. Um, and on top of this, we have losses that are added through the bends, and we want to calculate those as well. So let me draw a line here, and let's calculate the pressure loss due to the bends. The pressure loss due to the bends are calculated in a very similar way. Uh, we say delta P of the bends um, is the number of bends, which happens to be four in this case. Let me show you that again. Um, so that's one, two, three, and four bends over here. Number of bends um, multiplied by minus one half of rho times v squared. This is the average velocity multiplied by kl. Um, we quantify for each kind of obstacle inside the flow a parameter uh, called kl or the loss uh, coefficient. This parameter as it turns out, remains relatively constant, which means if you basically put a bend inside the pipe, um, the pressure loss that this bend will incur um, when there is flow is roughly proportional to the square of the velocity. So this KL remains constant, approximately constant, um, irrespective of the flow velocity that we have in there. And so for each classical type of bend or valve or obstacle or filter inside the flow, we typically have a KL factor that applies. This allows us to calculate the, the pressure losses. So we can put in data into here and we have now 4 multiplied by minus 1 half uh, multiplied by the density of water 10 to the power 3 multiplied by the velocity 0 0.842. This is squared and I multiply this by the KL that we have applying in our bends which happens to be in this case 0 0.75 this is not a very efficient uh, bend of course the smoother and the rounder the bend uh, the lower that number here and the lower the losses that, that will be occurred due to the bend um, and if you put numbers into this you put this into the calculator you get minus 1.06 times 10 to the power 3 pascals like so and this is the delta p bends like so and so we can see that the bends um, incur a pressure loss that is about if you compare it to the pressure due to friction pressure loss due to friction about 20 times smaller than the friction due to the loss uh, like so so this is how you calculate the pressure losses across the entire pipe due to friction on the walls and due to losses, turbulence losses through the bends of the pipe.